Hey everyone, and welcome back to Swift Guitar Lessons. Today, I'm very excited to get back to handling your request with a revamped version of my lesson on Stand By Me. Now before, I showed you a very beginner-friendly version of it, but this time around, I'm gonna show it to you in the original key of A, and also teach you how you can distribute parts of Lloyd Trotman's iconic bass line throughout your performance. But before we get there, I'm gonna pique your interest with a fantastic new product from my friends at Revo Guitar Straps. Revo is a company that creates very strong, comfortable, sturdy guitar straps from exotic woods and premium leathers, all sustainably sourced in Costa Rica. And you can see a lot of great artists using them. Carlos Santana, Zach Brown, Ziggy Marley, uh, Stanley Clark, just to name a few. So I'm gonna put information about these straps in the description. I hope that you'll support the company, and if you end up getting one, I'd love to see what you think of it. Now, let's get started with your lesson. A one, two, three, four. Okay, close look at the fretboard and also my strum in hand. Let's get started learning how to play the chords that we'll be using. This is a one, six, four, five progression in the key of A. So what does that mean? If I look at my A major scale, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step, I arrive at the notes A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A. If I look at just the first, the sixth, the fourth, and the fifth, it starts to sound like a bass line. And that reveals the chords that we'd be using. A, F sharp, D, and E. Well, the first, the fourth, and the fifth are always majors. And that sixth, that sixth note of the scale is always made into a minor chord. So, for these pop songs, you'd end up with an A major chord, an F sharp minor bar chord, a D major chord, and an E major chord. A one, six, four, five progression in the key of A. Now, for that five chord, one very, very cool and very professional trick is to add the seventh, the flatted seventh to that chord. So if I take my pinky 
and put it on the D, which in the E scale is the flat at seven. You end up with what's called E dominant seven, which is gonna build the tension, and it's always a great alternative. All right, now that you have your chords down, we're gonna get into a little bit of rhythm. Okay, so applied to that one, six, four, five progression, I have a strumming pattern that I'm going to be using as kind of like a bass. And intermittently, I'm gonna be adding in notes from Lloyd Trotman's bass line. But generally what's going on, and you can do this all the way through your version, over the A major chord, which you're gonna be playing as a bar now, put your first finger across D, G, and B string, and the high E string should be blocked. I want you to practice strumming. Down, chuck up, up, chuck up, down, chuck up, up, chuck up. So that's us utilizing a technique called the percussive hit. That's when we cover up the strings and chuck through, oftentimes diminishing the pressure that we have here on the left hand or whatever your picking hand is, so that way you have a lot of dead strings. So get that down first. I have a video dedicated to just that if you need it. And then start to throw in the extra strums. A downstroke. Percussive hit. Up, up, chuck, up. I always say practice things. Um, practice saying them. If you can't say it, you can't play it. So come up with something that you can repeat over and over again, a mantra as you practice. I'm saying down, chuck, up, up, chuck, up. Now notice my other fingers here with this A chord. I'm covering up the strings as I chuck. And it's all timed. You can do one upstroke or you can do two. And that's gonna go really well with this rhythm because we're emulating stuff that the drums were doing. gives me plenty of opportunities to switch to the bass line. Okay, let's see if we can apply that strumming pattern to each of the chords in our one, six, four, five. Now that we're barring the A chord, we're gonna have an easier time making it to the F sharp minor bar. So, over the A major chord, we're gonna have eight beats. So, we're gonna play our strumming pattern twice. Then the F sharp minor, we'll get the same treatment. Then we're going to the D major chord for half of that, just four beats or one round of the strumming pattern. Then we're going to the E major chord for the same amount. Then the whole thing loops back around to the A chord twice. So that was the completion of the strumming pattern. Eight, eight, four, four, Eight, and then it all repeats back on A major chord, which is where most players get a little confused. This progression is looping, so it's gonna begin with A major and also end with A major. Okay, so I'm gonna play through that progression with our percussive strumming pattern, and you're gonna see if you can play along at a modest tempo. Now remember, in order to make the changes on time, you've gotta jump on the last upstroke, which may mean that there's some muted strings or maybe some open strings in the middle of your transitions, which is okay. We have the A major chord fretted up with the bar style, being sure to block the high E string. We get started. One, two, three, four, and down, chuck, up, up, chuck, go down, chuck, up, up, chuck, jump. Okay, now that you understand the theory behind the tune, the chords themselves, and also the strumming pattern, I'm going to show you how you can integrate some of the bass line. It would sound like this. One, two, three. Okay, 
So this is something that I would throw in whenever I have some distance between the phrases. I'm talking about the vocal line. In areas where it's very demanding, like the chorus, I might just simplify it to just being the strumming pattern. But whenever I have an opportunity, I'll include some of these bass line notes. So, over the A major chord, I have uh, getting started with a one, two, three count off. One, two, three. Okay, so that was O4 on the low E string. A downstroke on the A major chord. And then a percussive hit with my fingers dampening the strings. Then I'll do two upstrokes in a row on the B string and G string. Then repeat. Okay, so next we have the F sharp minor chord. This transition from A to F sharp and the two measures on F sharp will sound like this. Okay, so that was the um, A major chord strum, a G sharp fourth fret low E string, then I'll have the second fret low E string, it's an F sharp root, that's going to be followed by a percussive hit. And two upstrokes. Notice how the F sharp was really short. That's going to be followed by a low E string, a strum, a chuck, and two upstrokes. All right, now moving on to the D major chord transition. Okay, so now a transition and a measure on D major. This will sound like this. Okay, so that was simple. Just O4 on the A string and a very short D note, just open D string. Notice how my fingers just kind of plop down on the D string to shorten it up. Then I'll do a percussive hit and one or two upstrokes. Or then transition into the E major chord, it would sound like this. All right, just like that, very simple. That was just O4 on the D string. Then I need to get right to the E major chord where I'll play. Downstroke on a plain E major, a percussive hit over muted strings, and two upstrokes on an E dominant seven. From there, you're going back to the A major chord with what you started with. Okay, fantastic. You now have everything you need to perform this tune. An understanding of the music theory, the chords, changes and transitions, and how to include parts of that bass line intermittently throughout your performance. Now I would suggest that you practice rehearsing the vocal line, being sure to rehearse along with Benny King's version in a place where you feel very comfortable. I like to rehearse in the car uh, as I drive. Now for the more advanced players, I'm going to show you how I would handle the instrumental section uh, in the form of a guitar solo. Let's get started with that. Okay, getting started with my interpretation of the instrumental section. It's gonna sound like this. One, two, three, four. Okay, so your first phrase over A major sounds like this. Okay, utilizing the A major scale, I gave it a strum with my barred A major chord. A chuck. Then we're gonna go A uh, G string, second fret, that's an A note. Three times. Down, up, down. The ring finger goes up a whole step to the fourth fret. 
slides up to the 6th fret, and the middle finger takes the E note, 5th fret, B string. Alright, next we transition to F sharp minor. Okay, so the F sharp minor lick is going to sound like this. That drops us off right on the F sharp note on the D string 4th fret. So I was already on the B string 5th fret from lick number 1, but now I'm going to play the 6th fret G string, set up a double stop holding the 4th fret G string and the B string 5th fret. This is a very Hendrixy move. All right, so I hammered from the 4th fret G to the 6th fret G string as I held down that E note 5th fret B string. Then I'll grab the 7th fret D string and the 6th fret. You put those two things together, and we have... Next, all you need to do is go to the uh, F sharp note, 4th fret D string, to drop you off on the F sharp minor chord. Okay, next we're going to be utilizing some open string chords. An F sharp minor 11, and a C7 shape, just a piece of it. So that F sharp minor 11 chord, I have the 4th frets of the A and D, and the 2nd fret of the G string. Open B, open high E string, and the thumb blocking the low E string. Coming out of that uh, second lick, you're gonna land on the F sharp note, fourth fret D string with the ring finger, then quickly transition to this shape. I like to throw in a slap first, then I'll strum. Maybe I'll throw in a little upstroke before I go to our next shape, which is a little piece of the C sharp seven chord. Fourth fret A string, sixth fret D string, fourth fret G string. A little uh, tiny piece of the bar chord that you might know. I'm gonna use my pinky here on the D string because I'm coming out of that F sharp minor 11 chord. Two chords that sound great together. Slap it. Then we have our arpeggio section over F sharp minor. Okay, so that was holding down an F sharp minor chord. That's going to be the fourth fret D string, and then a bar over the second fret G, B, and high E. We're not going to be using that high E string though. We're just going to play four. G string, G string, B string, G string, then use that note to slide up to the 6th fret. 7th fret B string, 5th fret high E string, 9th fret uh, high E string, creates kind of like a gypsy kind of position here that you'll see like Django Reinhardt use. Next I'm going to fret a D major chord and I'm going to do some riff in there. Okay, riffing over the D major chord, this part's going to sound like this. Very Hendrixy. Basically what we have, a strum of the D major bar chord, 5, 7, 7, 7. A little roll going E string 5, 7, A string 5. Great riff. Then I slid from 7 to 9 on the A string uh, to the 7th fret D string. Then I'm going to do a little hammer. Uh, that was a D string, 7 to 9 with the hammer. Then I'll land on the G string, 7th uh, fret, but I might bar so that way I get the B string in there too. A little piece of that triad. I'm going to do something similar over the E chord. I could do the same thing. But instead, I'm going to go real Hendrixy here. Just like that. Okay, so let's hear that E major riff one more time. I got the E major chord. Uh, it sounds like this. Okay. 
Okay, so that was strum the E major chord. That's seven nine nine nine. Slide on the D string nine to eleven. Then go to the G string ninth fret. All right, so utilizing notes from our E major pentatonic scale, that backyard thing that I've taught in so many lessons. Then we're gonna bar across the ninth fret G string, B string, and do a little hammer on on the B string nine, two, 12, and then going back. That's all you have so far. 11th fret first. So coming out of that slide, do the hammer in the pool on the B string, and then we're gonna go to the 11th fret uh, G string. Then we're gonna go hammer pull uh, 9 to 11, back to 9, and then land there on the D string 11th fret. Just like that, it's so Hendrixy. Then we're gonna go and build up on the A major chord, and I'll hold that out a lot longer than you might expect me to. And that's to build the, uh, the tension up and um, make it more momentous. That way when I go back to the F sharp minor with the original strumming pattern, the audience is more excited. So take an A major chord, bar it across, add your pinky to the high E string fifth fret. make that more momentous. You put all that together and we have, real slow. everyone, thanks so much for checking out this lesson on a more professional version of Stand By Me. Thanks so much to my friends at uh, Revo Guitar Straps, and I hope you all enjoy these straps and that you'll support this uh, great company. I got many more lessons coming up, so keep checking back. Please subscribe, please share. This is Rob at Swift Guitar Lessons in Philadelphia saying happy picking.